favourite time of year to go fishing. Um, lots of different species sort of turn up and arrive and it's the end of the winter time which can be a little bit of a doldrums for some anglers in certain parts of the UK coastline and uh, the sea starts to warm up and um, better fish arrive but you need fresh bait. Fresh bait is absolutely vital if you're going to do any good and I dig lugworm, um, you can buy it, I prefer to dig it, um, it's a bit cheaper that way and um, I like to use it sort of, you know, um, as quick as possible. Yeah, select so nice fresh venue, ones in there. Um, big tides around the UK, big rise and fall and um, you know, and some beaches of sand can complement areas with rock but um, I would always say, you know, look at a chart before you go um, and um, try and identify your patch of ground where, you, where you're fishing and look for sort of gullies or rock marks and you know areas to avoid and areas to fish and fish holding areas end of groins things like that um, places where they have big breakers can be an advantage for bass and things like that um, so yeah you just have to talk, do your research before you uh, arrive the tidal month for me the new moon is better. Anything with a full moon bright is, is a nightmare. Um, but yeah, bigger tides on the new moon for me are um, is what, what to look out for. Yeah, and obviously um, your neat tides on the new moon as well can be good on fast tide beaches. Yes, the end of groins, good fish holding features, but be careful not to cast your, um, your lead and get your line wrapped around it. But um, yeah, these sort of areas, um, fish will look to sort of patrol and sort of get cover from the tide and wait in ambush. Yeah, so these flat sandy beaches are good for flatfish and um, certain times you can pick up sole and um, you want to be fishing with quite small hooks, like anything from two, um, size two, size four, sixes, things like that, even a one. Um, small hooks is definitely the way to go. Yeah, you can use these ready-made scratching rigs. Pretty good, fast, and um, if you're going after sole, I suggest you put um, some swan shot on your hook length um, to um, to keep it down in the in this next surf. I don't know if it's a place or not. Mate. setting up um, you know you want to in a surf like that you want to position yourself quite a way away from the um, the edge obviously you've got to assess whether it's flooding or ebbing or whatever if it's ebbing you can get a bit closer and yeah you just quite simply you know position yourself somewhere sort of sensible um, if there's other anglers around you you've got to try and sort of give each other a bit of space because you're casting and stuff like that there's sort of a there's like a beach code on, on you know how you, how you sort of do that but you just sort of watch and learn and you know, and even just ask an angler if you can just slot in into a certain position. Yeah, rigging up, um, you usually fish two rods, and um, you just want to make sure you just do the basics well, like make sure you get your line through all of the eyes and, um, you know, tie your shock leader on um, well with a good knot. And um, yeah, just, just don't rush. Um, there's a temptation to get all, all excited when you're down at the beach and hurry, hurry, hurry. But if you arrive with plenty enough time, then you can just slowly rig up and just sort of get, just get a feel for the conditions and what it's going to be like. And um, there's no point hurrying because at the end of the day, you're there to sort of enjoy your fishing and to relax. Yeah, I always like to fish with a, um, a lead lifter, even on a sort of a fairly snag-free beach. I just like the, the lead as it, as it, as it lifts up because sometimes you can get caught on a few stones, and um, it's just you know I like using. It. Yes, um, I always like to tie on my own hook 
and, and you know, time a snood with my own knots and things like that. So I use anything from like fifteen pound to twenty pound amnesia. It looks something like this in the end. Um, you can buy them ready-made like that, but I like to tie them on. This is like a size one hook, and I just use um, like a half blood knot, just like that, just to attach the hook. Um, I find 15, 20 pound line doesn't make a, such a really big knot for your log worm to sort of to, um, um, to sort of catch on. So you know, you can 15 pound line. You'd be surprised what size fish you can land on 15 pound line. Pretty damn big if you take it easy. Um, so yeah, just, um, just like to trim trim off the knot a little bit there. And like I say, you can buy you can buy them ready made. These are size ones, very good all round sort of scratch and sort of rigs and there's a flatty um, Bosakuma one there you know and um, they save time and um, you know it's, uh, they're nice to sort of have you know different, different time if you, if you sort of press for time and um, yeah so we just it just takes a bit of time to, to, to put it together on the beach but like I say if you arrive early it doesn't really matter very rarely do I have to do this process again throughout the session. Um, when I was getting snagged up and when I was breaking off a lot of gear, yes, but no, no I sort of um, I've managed to sort of I fish in certain spots where I know it ain't too snaggy and I don't cast so hard, whack it so hard. But here I'm just attaching a snood knot, my snood knot, I call it. It's, it probably has got a specific name, but I don't know what it is. But I literally just form a loop, wrap it round about six times like that and you just simply just go through there and you can tie a bit more secure one than that but I find that holds perfectly for the size fish I have off here I mean that would that would handle a double figure anything um, and all I do is grab the pliers and just between the shock leader and the amnesia I just nip it tight and it never slips out and I just snip it off there leave it give it a bit of sort of a half a centimetre where I, where I sort of snip it um, and never have any problems with that. I've had, on that knot I've um, I landed a 19 and a half pound smooth hound in New Zealand about five years ago whenever it was on that exactly the same knot but it was probably 30 pound line but yeah just goes to show you what sort of size fish you can actually land. Yes positioning of your gear now this is actually quite an important one, um, and a lot is dependent on a lot of things, but we'll, we'll start with the basics. Um, firstly, you want to position yourself, so try if you can get some shelter from the wind, that would be my number one. With regard to other anglers on the beach, for me, you want whatever the tide is doing, you want to be up tide of them, so the fish come to you first. And also, give yourself as much space as you can from other anglers. Find the fish. Yes, that's a good one, that is. Um, with surf casting, um, you know, distance is key. And I would always say, uh, foremost, you want to try and cast as far as you can to find the fish. However, a lot of good fish are caught close in. And if you're not much of a caster, uh, you can go at night time and do a short cast and you'll find a lot, a lot of the good fish will actually come inshore in the dark with the cover of darkness. So, um, yeah, don't panic if you can't cast too too far. A lot, a lot of good fish on certain beach, on some beaches are in very, very, very close. Yes, each venue has its own sort of hot spots, and it just takes, you know, experience and just fishing the beach a lot to really understand where all the fish holding features are. Yes, baiting up. Um, yep, Aberdeen hooks are pretty good for lugworm, and um, you just feed them on. Usually, a couple of worms like that would be suffice. Um, you can tip it with a bit of fish or squid or something like that, but I find just lugworm on its own is more streamlined for casting and just as most effective um, for bait. And um, yeah, it's got to be fresh. So sometimes you get a situation where the lugworm will fly off the hook. That's usually when the lugworm's a bit old. But if it's been freshly dug, you shouldn't have an issue at all. Sometimes what you see flying off 
I like the little tails and bits and pieces, but you can sort of pull them off anyway, or just you expect to see a little bit flying off. Some people have been using cotton for lugworm, but it's not something I would advise too much. Um, usually you want to use cotton for like your crab baits and your squid and stuff which got all good potential to fly off. Um, but lugworm should be strong enough um, to stay on the hook. And um, I find just a single hook on its own. Um, years ago I used to fish two hooks, Pinnell rigs, but I find you catch just as many just on a, on a single hook rig. Yes, practice is the key to this one. Practice and not trying too hard. Um, years ago, I used to think distance, 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 and I used to snap off loads of gear. But for fishing, it does, it's not so much about. It's about getting a sort of a, a sort of a, a mid to sort of optimum performance of out of your gear. Really, you don't want to be sort of. It's not. You, you don't need a tournament cast on the beach to go fishing. It just causes problems. But. Um, I use an off the ground cast and it's worked for me. It's very sort of, um, it's it's not so technical and it's straightforward and you still get a lot of compression out of your rod um, as much as you would if you were doing a pendulum cast. Um, need a bit of space to do it, but I've, I've never found I've had any, any problems. I even use it fishing off the rocks, off the ground, um, so. This, so this is a, a, a fixed spool, and um, that's fifty pound line there, um, and um, obviously that's bright fluorescent for, for night fishing, which can be very effective. And um, yeah, it's generally um, it, you could call it the same for African cast, a ground cast, an off the ground cast, and um, you do need a glove, you do need a finger stall to hold the line. With a fixed bill, you can give it some welly um, without worrying too much about getting a bird's nest or anything like that. That's with a multiply, you've got to be a little bit more um, delicate uh, where you could get a bird's nest. And as I'm walking back here, remember just to keep your line angled up high so it doesn't scuff in all the um, in all the stones. But um, yeah, this diagram is very useful with regards yeah, they use to an example uh, of um, your casting position. Like a 100 yard cast. So obviously, if you cast it at A, then your lead in a strong tide will end up in around about C. And if you cast at B or C, say, um, it will end up at D. you just got to remember to pay out enough line. Make sure there's a good bit of bow in your line. And um, so that lead will just sink, set hard at the bottom on a strong tide. It does have the potential to lift the lead out and to bounce it around. And if you're using braid, that exasperates it even more. I would I recommend using mono all day long over braid for surf casting, especially when there's a lot of tide. Yes, how long do you, how long to leave your bait out there? Um, lugworm, 10 minutes. If your rod tip is bouncing around as soon as you've casted it in and you've got some peckers yeah, whole squid um, about out there, 15 minutes. Whole peeler crab, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It just depends. If you can just sense that your rod tip has got some peckers there, then you need to wind it in and um, double check. But usually about 10 minutes, five minutes for lugworm. Not long at all. You want a fresh bait on all the time. Yeah, each venue will have its own sort of um, time when there's lots of fish around. Could be for an hour, two hours. Um, so you want to research that. Um, as for tactics, um, fish one rod short, one rod long, and um, vary up your baits a little bit, and always fresh bait. That would be, be mine. And um, yeah, um, fish in sort of you know reasonable, good conditions. When I first started out bass fishing, um, a chap who um, writes in the local newspaper said to me, "So you want to fish for them, or you fish for cold?" And another person said to me, um, you want to fish with them on a running rig. My preference, my preference would be for a running rig. If you're fishing into rough ground, I would use a stray line rig. However, with a stray line rig, you do struggle for distance because it's just you and the bait. Um, 
but you can use a rig detailed here um, where you use spark plug weight, rotten bottom line, and uh, have a running pattern oster that way. Yeah, this diagram details some bass, you know, tight into the shingle bank, um, close in. Yeah, a good time to fish a beach is straight after a storm, maybe a, maybe a day or so. Um, there may be problems with weed and things like that, however, there's usually a lot of um, food has been dislodged and it's washing around in the surf, so it's often a very, very good time um, to grab your surf cast and gear. Yes, low tides, high tides for fishing. Each venue's obviously got its own peak times. Um, so yeah, you just have to do, do your research. There's usually a lot of information from different people online and in books as well that tells you um, when are peak times at certain beaches. Therefore, you just, you just got to get the conditions right and um, do the basics well. And there's no reason why you can't do as good as anybody else. Yes, we can be a little bit of a nuisance. Uh, around the leader knot, end of the rod tip. Um, usually there's a bit of weed in the surf after a bit of a storm, just pluck it like that. And you can end up with a nice little bass like that. Little schooly bass on lugworm. And um, he's just taking a single hook. Don't necessarily need a Pennell rig. Two hooks, just one hook. And there he's, um, he's gone for his own favourite lugworm. Yes, the old teens, white teens, usually sort of arrive before them coddling turn up and um, they're okay for a bit of sport and if you haven't seen them what seen one for for a year or so then it can be quite amusing but it's cod which most anglers go to the beach for but the waters have been a lot warmer um, these past few years and the, the um, cod haven't been around uh, so much still there's been one or two caught in, in spring uh, but there's usually an autumn run a winter run and a spring run of um, of codlin, but whiting can be quite nice. They're a little bit bony to eat, um, but you know it's, um, it's the cold. Yes, yeah, so this is a bass really caught off the um, walk off the lugworm close in. Just lip hooked. Corner is my flat. Oh yeah. Oh, he's about. I don't know. Oh, nice one. The old dogfish. Bit of a pest fish. Um, they like the old fishy bait. So if you're going after a skate or something like that, they often um, take the bait for that. It can be can be um, there in massive amount of numbers and really just disrupt you what you mean what you're going after. But um, welcome nonetheless, but a uh, bit of a pest. Yeah, for me, cod fishing wants to be done on a fast tide beach or at night time. Um, and fishing, uh, I find pig the crab is a really good bait for them. And um, on a fixed pat pattern oster. And um, yeah, I can remember one night um, a few years back where I had two, I had sort of two nice ones all in, in within a few minutes of each other and then nothing you find with the cold. They just, they come past on a certain part of the tide and then they're gone. So they're there for like an hour and then they're gone. But um, I had a two, I had one sort of six pound and seven pound um, in the dark one night. It's good fun. Yes, the old dabs. Very tasty, good eating. Small hooks for them, size four, something like that. Size two, number two. And, um, yeah, they're sort of um, almost like transparent when you sort of look through the body of them. And um, they've got a rough back. And, um, very sweet tasting flesh, very good eating. And um, lugworms, good bait for them. But you know, you present the bait mix or cocktail bait on a small book. Um, certain times of the, the year that they're in they're in, in, in numbers. And so this is just a bit of an explanation on how you uh, distinguish like between. The scales on the upper side feel rough when rubbed from tail to head. Yeah, it's just a um, fish limits 
chart here on different sizes for bits and pieces. Mackerel, 300. Um, bass, it says 46 on there, but it's actually 42 at the minute, 42 centimetres. Codland, 35 centimetres. So, yeah, just a reminder, just you just got to stick to your sizes and um, pop the fish back, which are undersized. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and um, please subscribe. There's many more videos coming along the way. I hope you found it useful, and uh, tight lines. See you later.